Driving with the open top is one of the most fun things you can do in a car. But when you think about a convertible brand, maybe you think about a sports car manufacturer like Porsche or the classic premium manufacturers like Audi, BMW and Mercedes. But what about cabriolets that are not that expensive? Well, Volkswagen actually has a rich history of building convertibles that sold in higher numbers than you might expect. And the heritage is full of unique vehicles and it will now be continued in an unusual way. Let us take you on a journey with a special feature on the history of Volkswagen convertibles. This is the latest development in the history of Volkswagen convertibles. The VW T-Roc Cabriolet, an SUV convertible that is built here in Osnabrück in the north of Germany. The plant, formerly run by Karmann, which was later bought by VW, has been one of the most important factories for convertibles worldwide for almost 75 years. It has built almost all Volkswagen convertibles. Oh, did you hear that trunk closing sound? Interesting that already in the unfinished car it has this rich closing sound. And also very interesting, testing the rollover protection that automatically pops out when a certain degree angle is reached. These systems make fixed roll bars obsolete. Meanwhile, 2300 people are working in the plant, also assembling other VW Group cars like the Škoda Karok or the Porsche Cayman. On the Beetle Sunshine Tour, a big Beetle enthusiast event in Germany, we could compare the three Beetle generations, the original one and the new Beetle in two generations. The first vintage Beetle prototype was built in 1937 by Ferdinand Porsche. But it was after the war in 1946 when the first sea reproduction Beetle was built and 1949 as the first convertible followed. This original Beetle or Kefa Cabriolet is from the 1970s had around 50 horsepower. This model is called 1302. The interior matches the orange color on the outside and the carrier roof was of course still manual work. We had a lot of fun driving it being so unusual from the seating position alone and if you compare it to nowadays cars. And this is a 1303. It was the latest original VW vintage Beetle convertible. Overall, over 330,000 Beetle cabriolets were sold. In 1957, the Karmann Gia Cabriolet aired at the IIA Motor Show in Frankfurt. It was named after the founder of the Cabriolet plant, which was building all the open-top cars for Volkswagen. Using Beetle technology and engine, it was said to be the housewife's Porsche. Ultimately, they sold 80,000 Gia convertibles and almost five times as many coupés until 1974. The VW Golf Cabriolet on the base of the VW Golf 1. This is a Karmann prototype from 1976 without rollover bar which never went into production.
Brother, this 1979 Golf Cabriolet is the oldest one still alive. As you can see, it is a cutaway model that was produced for motor shows. Indeed, it did premiere at the 1979 Geneva Motor Show with the first car in its segment with a fixed rollover bar. This led to a worldwide comeback for convertibles. The Golf 1 convertible would be sold 380,000 times. At that time, Volkswagen also came up with a special military convertible, the VW Iltis. It was built from 1978 to 1988 and was actually built at Audi Ingolstadt. In 1980, this VW Iltis was the winner car at the second edition of Rally Dakar. The vehicles were not heavily modified and even second, fourth and ninth place were achieved with this VW Iltis, which means pole kit, by the way. back to the Golf convertible. It did not make every single new Golf generation, but was constantly updated. In 1990, the first electric roof was introduced. It was built until 1993, here one of the last ones. The new Golf 3 convertible was introduced in 1993 as well. In 1997, the Golf 4 came out and the existing Golf 3 convertible received the front and engines from the Golf 4. Parallel in 1998, the new Beetle was released. You might remember it being in the Midtown Madness game by Microsoft as a great marketing stunt. It brought back many memories and gained its own fanbase. In 2011, the second generation was released, which was 27 cm longer. Later on there was a special edition Beetle Dune with off-road looks and special designs. That was fitting in the surging SUV and crossover trend and was also especially popular among customers who wanted a more masculine look for the Beetle. In 2006, in an era of hardtop convertibles like the Mercedes SLK or the BMW 3 Series, VW brought the EOS to the market. It was built from 2006 to 2015 and was in this case not built in Osnabrück but in Portugal. Technology-wise, it was an interesting hybrid between Passat and Golf. Sadly, the EOS was famous for its leaky top in harsh rain but it also had its own fan base and a very unique styling. In 2011, the new Golf 6 convertible came out. Here a GDI from 2013. And yes, this was the last VW Golf R convertible, the Golf 6 Cabriolet. Straight in the design lines, straight in the pipes. Timeless exterior and interior.
and 2020 marks the year of the VW T-Roc Cabriolet. There were off-road convertibles like the Land Rover Defender or the Mercedes G-Class, but as for SUV convertibles, there were only the Nissan Murano and the Range Rover Evoque so far. Now Volkswagen will offer an affordable SUV convertible, not only does it replace the Golf Cabriolet, it will also be a completely unique offer on the market as for its vehicle concept. It uses the MQB platform from the Golf 7 generation and has a length of 4 meters 27 or 168 inches and will feature a soft top that opens in 9 seconds. The interior will offer fabric seats, sports seats in the R-Line, digital instruments and an 8-inch touchscreen. Engines will so far only come in lower specs like in many models of the VW Cabriolet history as 1 liter TSI with 115 horsepower or 1.5 liter TSI with 150 horsepower. And now it will be time for us to take it out for a spin. And tell us which one of the VW convertibles is your favorite from this episode. See you in the comments section.